Saint stands for Steve's acting is not terrific. I'm Justin. Scroter Butterfly. I'm Sam. Your mama was nothing but a snowblower. This is Jackie. And this is Short Circuit on Stinker Madness. What's that smell? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm thirsty as fuck. Thirsty, thirsty, thirsty as fuck. Hey, look at me! You! Thrill me. If you come back in here, I'm gonna hit you with so many rights, you're gonna beg for a left. Thrill me. Beg for a left. Thrill me. Hey, look at me! No! What? Hang on! It stinks. Hang on! Hello and welcome to Stinger Madness, the podcast that you choose to listen to at this very second. Uh, thank you for doing that. And uh, don't change the channel. <laughs> There's not even a channel to change. <laughs> yeah, you just you use Maybe, a remote for your phone. You that's know? that's how we're going to confuse you into listening to the rest of the show, making you think there's channels. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a big ruse. Yeah, right? like, yeah. wait a second. This isn't PBS. You're goddamn right. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to watch Nova. Uh, speaking of Nova, um, this is a podcast about bad movies by bad movie lovers for bad movie lovers. This week on the show, we delve into 1986's phenomenon called Short Circuit, starring Steve Gutenberg, Ali Sheedy, and Fisher Stevens, all making their second appearance on the podcast. So, uh, Jackie, you brought us uh, Short Circuit. What was uh, what was the reasoning here? I like the song. Who's Johnny? Yeah. By... Elda Barge. Elda Barge. Hell yeah, Johnny, man. They said, uh, I loved Elda Barge. Well, when I was, when a, kid. I was a kid, I actually saw this movie and I liked it a lot. Mm -hmm. No, this was a major deal. And, you know, the opening line that I gave, I remember going around saying that to other kids on the playground. I thought it was super funny. I retold the, the priest, the rabbi, and the whatever joke. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I told a man that he was a snowblower, his mother was a snowblower in traffic. Just earlier this week. And then, he, and then, <laughs> he he, did? then he pulled out a gun and shot at you. <laughs> yeah, he kicked me in the nuts and I fell down. Road rage. Yeah. <laughs> Blood on the highway. <laughs> I said, your mother was a snowblower. And he's like, well, I wish she'd come over. I've got snow in my driveway. <laughs> it snowed last week. <laughs> I said, your mother was a snowblower to somebody one time. Because that's what I call my I call my dick snow. Get it? That, anybody? <laughs> Oh, okay. Because it's, it's very pale. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't get a lot of sun. <laughs> I I give my wiener a nice tan, <laughs> and in the winter I just sort of hold it next to the toaster. It kind of works the same. You use bronzer, like you know, you're, you you make your dick look like the president. <laughs> it's a dick. <laughs> I like my dick look like the president, pink and spongy. <laughs> It kind of does look like the president now that you mention it. It's losing all its hair now that you're getting older. <laughs> yeah. Don't go out in a windstorm, blows sideways. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so Short Circuit uh, is a movie about a robot. <laughs> sure is. <laughs> um, Man, Steven Gutenberg, that guy, like... Anytime we have him on the show, which is surprisingly only twice, because his career was basically... It was hot and fast. It was a downhill ski slope with no jump at the end. He had that movie that he did, and I think I kind of talked about this when we did Can't Stop the Music, uh -huh. with uh, Shelley Long, where he was like, it was this lovable loser thing and he was getting back into dating and it was supposed to be a big thing for everybody involved. Okay. And it... Him and Shelley Long did not survive no, that they movie. Didn't. No, they didn't. And it had this really long, stupid cartoon beginning that Ugh. had nothing to do with the movie. Ugh. Like a Pink Panther sequence, only dumb and unrelated. Like Chomps shows up and, you know. It was stupider than that. Stupider than Chomps? Chomps was unavailable for the cartoon beginning <laughs> of that movie. Um, Sam, tell us about Short Circuit. Well... Uh, short circuit either costs nine million or fifteen million, depending on who you ask. All right, who's saying who? What? Uh, 
Well, numbers says we don't know. Okay. Box Office Mojo says nine. Uh-huh. Um, IMDb in the trivia had one of the players saying that it actually cost $15 million. Okay. Uh, of that budget, so depending on how you're counting it, if it's only $9 million, the majority of it was spent on Johnny Five. Right, right, Cause right. Because they were originally, the studio was like, the studio made a list of demands and only 90% of them were met. The only thing that uh, was sort of resisted was the stop motion demand. Mm. They wanted to do it. They thought it was going to be better if they did it practically with puppeteers and minimal robotics. Mm-hmm. And so they got Sid Mead from Blade Runner and uh, mm-hmm. Tron okay. to come in right. and uh, some experience build the robot based on designs by a guy named Eric Allers. Okay. And they, I mean, knowing that this was a mostly puppeteered device. Mm-hmm. Rather than a remote control. Rather than, well... Like the eyes and a lot of the other stuff were remote control. At mm-hmm. one point, depending on which rig they were using, it had up to 12 people running him at once. Yeah. But for the most part, it was one guy above him in a harness puppeteering him. And that's kind of impressive. That is kind of impressive. I wouldn't have expected that. Either, like, for all of the bad things that we're about to say about this movie, yeah. Johnny looks good. Yeah. Um, I don't know about that if you want to say $9 million to $15 million. Because I go back to Chopping Mall, which is a Wynerski film. Cost none monies, and I think the robots look just as good in that as no, Johnny they, Five. They did. don't have any of the eye, the the eyes and the. Okay, well, I don't necessarily like the eyes. So yeah, sure. I mean the eyes for this for Johnny Five mm-hmm. and the rest of the robots. That's what defines their whole character. Yeah, it does. And if they don't have the eyebrows and they have no expression, they just have eyes that go bigger and smaller, or red or green. Yeah, 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 or blue. Yeah. But either way, yeah, that's where the majority of the budget supposedly went there. Unless it was 15, then it was like a good chunk of the budget, and then uh, somebody horked it down. Maybe it was Ali Sheedy and, and uh, Gutenberg because they're so hot right then. Yeah, I think they were horking something else down, like Coke. <laughs> like, oh, they blow. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Their mother's a snowblower. She's blowing in cocaine into the trailers because Ali Sheedy stinks. What does it? She doesn't stink like cocaine stink, though. Dude, she's fren... She, what, is, what is that word? Not frantic, frantic but frenetic. Like, frenetic. She's... She manic. Spazzy. This whole movie, like... She's a space cadet. Can't stop moving. Ali Sheedy plays Ali Sheedy in movies. She, she, she's yeah. very... Well, obviously, her character's super subdued in The Breakfast Club, but she's not... Like, she's this lady's this. jittery. Like, she's had way too much coffee. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I've seen people on cocaine, and she doesn't look like... Okay, all right. Yeah. Uh, so John Badham, the director, who was the one that put up the fight, apparently this was a very heartbreaking script in a very serious <laughs> film originally, <laughs> and the, uh. one of the only actors was the guy that runs the, the director, he, uh, the uh-huh. director of the program of right, Nova or whatever, Nova. he was like, what happened? Because he was one of the ones that saw the original version of the script, and John Badham was like, yeah, we're making a kid's movie now. <laughs> Got Ali Sheedy and Gutenberg, and he's like, all right, whatever. Yeah, fine. Fine. Whatever. Uh, we will know John Badham because he's he's worked. Okay. He's done extensive films and television. Uh, sort of his top end would be War Games and Stakeout. War Games with Broderick. Yes. And Stakeout with Dreyfus. Richard, and Richard Dreyfus and Emilio. And Emilio. Oh, man, those movies stink. What? Wow. The first stakeout's awesome, I think, because yeah. <laughs> I saw it around the same time I saw this, and I thought this was awesome. Uh, and then the writers have uh, also wrote, you'll recognize Tremors, and right after this, Battery's not included. That's S.S. Wilson and Brent Maddock. And I don't give a fuck, dude. Tremors has one of the best screenplays ever. That fucking movie is awesome. Tremors is super efficient. Yeah. Yeah. And have you guys ever seen Batteries Not Included? About the same time as this. I've, I've been wanting to re- revisit it. I've never seen it. <laughs> I, I, I'm i with you. I remember watching it when I was a kid, but I don't I don't remember anything about it. Let me ask you this, Jackie. Did you like Cocoon? No. No. OK. Um, Cocoon and Batteries Not Included are basically the same movie. It's old people. <laughs> it's the old people movie. Hey, look at those old folks having fun. They got robots. Flying robots. That's why I like Battery Cocoon has nothing to do with flying robots. No, 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 but it's old people having 
you know, adventures. Old people adventures. Nope, they're not old people at all. In Cocoon? Yeah, they take off their skin and they're aliens. No, 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 not the Cocooners. Fucking all the old people that discover the Cocoons. No, they're they're the aliens. What Steve movie? Gutenberg's driving the boat. You should watch that again. What movie really am I movie. thinking of? I don't know. Like where they, oh, the old people have to get in the pool, you know? Yep, then they take off their skin and they're aliens, and I freaked the fuck out when that happened when I was a kid. But they're posing as old people, right? They were. Okay, yeah, see, it's old people having adventures. <laughs> Until they take their skin off and they're aliens. <laughs> well, you Huge <know>. difference. <laughs> and then when... Okay, whatever. <laughs> Let's get back to the... To me, the older generation is a bunch of aliens. Because they're old and weird. <laughs> You're almost there, buddy. That's right. You're one inch away from your ball sack hitting the floor. Yeah. I would not be uh, shaking a stick at the old folk. I wish I could take my skin off because this set's getting pretty gross. I would say one inch, but it's more like you're a handkerchief in the front pocket of your bathrobe <laughs> away from being there because that's the only thing you're missing is the handkerchief. Uh, let's get to the Fisher Stevens business. All right. Yeah. Um, right. Oof. Ouch. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah, it's not good. So he got fired. From? This movie. How? Originally from trying to play a white guy. Because he is a white guy. Yeah. So they hired Bronson uh, Pinchot, mm. who then leaves the, pro- he leaves the project to be Balky. Right. And then when they bring Fisher Stevens back, all of a sudden, this is what happens. Well, they're probably like, hey, we had Balky. Balky's the hottest thing in America right now. Probably offensive to some people, but uh, let's uh, let's do that because it's working with Balky, right? Is he the voice of a poo on The Simpsons? Balky? Oh no, no, not Balky. No, the, no, no, no. Uh, Fisher Stevens. Yeah. No, no Hank Azaria. Yeah. is the voice of half of the people in The Simpsons. Right. Oh, okay. He just sounded so similar because like, it's a because fucking it's racist. horrible <laughs> stereotype, Jackie. That's why. <laughs> Thank you. They, come again. <laughs> apparently, they did a really good job with him, though, because he looks almost the spitting image of an actual Indian actor who is coming up right now. And so overseas audiences were very confused. Then just hire the, the, the Indian actor. That's the problem. Or make him a white guy. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, it was such a thing, I guess, in retrospect, that Aziz Ansari had uh, Fisher Stevens on his podcast and was asking him, like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> Because did he? Because he is a. I don't want to sound racist, but he is a white guy. Yeah, he's he? a white guy. They, fucking white guy. So they black faced him. Yes, basically. Yes, they brown faced him. Oh, and made him. He can't speak English, <laughs> and he's got a funny accent to make the kids laugh. Oh my god! Nice I, stuff. I just thought he had a really bad tan. I will tell you that uh, I believe uh, him. Uh, what, what's his character's name? Doctor Ben something. Ben Juyumta. Yeah. Um, he's the reason why we're watching. We watch this film because our good friends, Matt and Jen, uh, they told us that it's pretty tough. Like, it's not good. No. Go back and watch Short Circuit and prepare to be pissed off. Yeah, that's where the whole thing with the, apparently the Bronson Pinchot thing came out then during this you know interview with Aziz Ansari. And, mm-hmm. uh He's like, of course, I didn't want to do that. And, of course, this would never happen again because it's that fucking bad. Right. Uh, Except for he did it twice. (laughs) He was in short circuit, too, dude. (laughs) Yeah, well, he he needs to eat. And I was wondering, you know, like, why he didn't go, okay, why aren't... Oh, I'm I'm sorry, Aziz, I'm sorry. So what's with grabbing the butts, bud? He's a butt grabber? Yeah, he got some sexual assault. Oh, good, good. What's it? What is it? Uh, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> what the know. fuck is going on here? Well, everybody's grabbing everybody's butt. That's Except mine. On. Dude, this is the 80s. Sexual harassment is at its peak. Oh, no. Aziz Ansari did that recently. Oh, oh. I thought you meant Fisher Stevens. No, Fisher was Stevens grabbing. is not. Yeah, I knew about the Aziz butt. Ansari's, but actually that got debunked that did he, it? he wasn't doing oh, just, that. Yeah. Okay. He's uh, not a butt grabber? I don't think so. I kind of checked out because I, I, I really liked Aziz Ansari until I saw his stand up and I was like, this is pretty humdrum stand-up, to be honest. Now, if we want to lump them all together, Kamel Nanjiani is the guy. Yeah, he's That's funny. the guy. He's funny. Yeah, he's fucking brilliant. Um, what else you got, Sam? Other than that giant lump of information that I just dumped out, not really anything. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Also, I'm an oh, asshole because Kamel Nanjiani is a uh, Pakistani, whereas Aziz Ansari is 
Well, you just said let's lump them all together. Yeah, because I'm an asshole. Yeah, so yeah. that's not what we were doing. We were like, well, know. this movie was made in the 80s. You're just following suit. I almost was. Yeah. Um, I was made worse in the 70s when everybody was high on cocaine and disco. Sure. So, yeah. Yeah, I know. I mean, if we're going to talk about the funny guys like that, Cheech Marin, you know, he's brown, right? Yeah. It's not- Anybody who's not white gets to be in this thing that we're yeah. going to say right now. Yeah, we shouldn't do that. Nope. <laughs> nope. Shouldn't do that. One day Spike Lee will make a movie lampooning our disasters. <laughs> Stick of madness, assholes. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> up in this joint, we're going to make fun of some stupid bitches. I really hope that they get Natalie Portman to play me. They will not. <laughs> I would like to be played by Justin Timberlake, just like Elton John. You know, I'm okay with being played by Natalie Portman as well. <laughs> <laughs> She's great. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't say that the movie made $40 million against whatever the... Budget disaster was it nine? Was it fifteen? Either way, it was a fucking blockbuster. Yeah, this thing made all the cash. Right. Huge success. Probably this is right at the uh, the launch of the home video market as well. So I'm and so cleaned up on VHS. Speaking of awards that I almost forgot to mention, you would think that this thing would clean up at the Saturn Awards, right? Yeah, yeah. didn't didn't win any. Really? Because Aliens came out that year and yep. won fucking That'll all of it. them. That'll do it. However, this one got the soundtrack award. Well, that song was the feel good hit of the summer. God, because of who's Johnny? I mean, yeah, yeah it's it's the feel good hit of the summer, but soundtrack? The whole yeah. that's like more than one song, Jackie. And we heard the song at the end of this movie. It's crap. Well, it's probably <laughs> awesome for the eighties. I don't think so. I mean, because you know we didn't like it. We liked who's Johnny. Yeah. Oh, the barge. I didn't like who's Johnny. You didn't? No, nope, I didn't like El Barge. Uh, you still don't. I, I always forget who they are until you're like, hey, that's Elda Barge. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, they had a ton of hits. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, everybody forgets about the Elda Barge. I was like, give well, us a maiden. <laughs> yeah, they would have had like a one word name like maiden. No, I didn't really listen Ex- to maiden at this except point. Except for maiden doesn't Kiss. have one word <laughs> name. It's Iron Maiden. You right. Go on. <laughs> but, you know, anytime we get into the two name groups, right? Like Iron Maiden. <laughs> like Iron Maiden. Yeah. Um, you know, some of the other ones. That's why I can't remember them, because they've got more than one name. If it's just one name, I can usually remember who they are. Enya. Madonna. So, how about DeBarge? DeBarge is one word. Yeah. It's their last name. Right. That's Then there you go. DeBarge. The Jackson. Jackie would remember them, then. What about Metallic A? Metallica A. <laughs> Metallica A? <laughs> no, they're just Metallic A. And Metallic A, yeah. Yeah, it's two words. <laughs> The A's really big on the logo. How am I supposed to know? Mega Deef. That's just not funny. It's not. Okay. I'm not. Um, What else? Anything? I just said there wasn't anything else. What else Before you got? digging up more stuff. Hey, hey, what else you got? Talking for 10 <laughs> minutes about the history of this movie. Tell us more about Short Circuits. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of deleted scenes, and I couldn't find out what the fuck is going on with them. So if anybody knows about what the fuck is going on to, with these deleted scenes, write, it, uh, write to us at yeah, Talk to Madness. have a DVD copy of this. Yeah. Then. Which, you know, ends up like the Batman soundtrack. You just chuck it at zombies. Like, fuck this movie. <laughs> yeah. I guess there had to be some delete deletions, because apparently the first screening session... Mm-hmm. Uh, people were booing because they thought that that Ali Sheedy was going to have sex with the robot. Well, and uh, she's an America's sweetheart at this point. Well, let's uh, let's see let's see if we can figure out if she did because I'm not convinced she didn't. He and I think that most of the third arm scenes probably got cut out because of that because they're like. That is a giant uh, prehensile penis that that robot has in the middle of his body. Yep, where his waist would be. That's what I thought was great was during the demonstration. I'll just start us off here. Uh, we open up on a demonstration. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Oh, okay. Okay. What else can you well, tell us okay. about short <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay. Sorry. So we open up on a demonstration. They have five of these robots mm-hmm. and they are taking- The saints. The saints. Yeah. And they are in uh, sandbag duckouts and they're- Shooting up tanks and shit. Right. Blowing them up with so, their lasers. With their lasers. Exploding lasers. And yeah. when they come back to the unit, right, or when they come back to the audience, right, and they're mm-hmm. all standing there. You said unit. Unit. Well, this is what I'm thinking, though, is that. They have prehensile units. Yeah, like they have the arms and they come up and then there's this weird thing that comes up in between their arms. Yeah. And doesn't have a clearly stated purpose. Yeah. We, we really kind of get the point of that later when, you know, he's short. Johnny Five is like starting a car or. 
yeah. the dildo comes out of it. I don't know. So it's kind of like R2-D2's socket? It's like a plunging. pocket knife. It's like penis. a Swiss army dick. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, if you're a robot, you might as well have one. Sure. But it's like snaking around on wish, its own in that shot. I wish my penis had multiple functions rather than just looking at me sadly. <laughs> yeah. Just like the president. <laughs> Uh, don't okay. listen to michael cohen my penis <laughs> it'll be okay <laughs> you rat <laughs> no that's the penis talking to michael you a rat <laughs> i well my penis is a rat too <laughs> okay huh dirty filthy rat <laughs> tell everybody in the organization we, that we're terrible yeah, sometimes i catch it walking around with pizza <laughs> Yeah, rat with pizza. You guys don't remember rat with pizza? No. <laughs> Giant rat dragging a piece of pizza back to its house in New York. Like, you never saw that meme going around? Uh-uh. Oh, oh my God, it was awesome. It's fantastic. Okay, I got to get that one. I just remember the lamps things with the moth. I don't see how that's related or... It's a meme. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> see, I was like, I'm making it related. I remember rats and the giant electric cheese. I remember cats flushing the toilet, but so what, dude? <laughs> How does that involve my penis? Uh, Jackie, continue. I guess you're the narrator today. Why well, don't I didn't take any notes? Fuck, this is gonna be like <laughs> so, the then, shortest. Um, okay, so then the next thing that happens, she shows up. And is that there's like, a rainstorm? Well, so they go in and they have all these other like made robots that are passing out drinks mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. chips and shit. Yeah, they got robots everywhere. Yeah, and uh, you know they. They leave Johnny Five connected to the generator. Mm-hmm. Why they get everybody else ready to roll? Are, are they charging him up? Is that what like? I guess like you expelled all of your laser energy, so we need to plug you in for a while. Here's a fun thing: mm-hmm. uh, power consumption never gets sort of revisited in this. No, film it certainly after. doesn't. Maybe because well, uh, maybe we could draw some theories there. Um, he gets electrocuted because the uh, the electrical storm and the generator gets electrocuted and he starts goes all R two D two getting captured by Jawas, and uh, that's when he gains sentience, I believe. Yep. Well, he gets. Yeah, I don't know if he gains sentience. Yeah, I don't fucking know. Maybe. What's your other theory? That he doesn't become fully self aware until a little bit later. I think self-awareness and sentience are two different things. Okay, they? well, then all right. Yeah, he's conscious. He's at least aware of his own thoughts, not his own being. He's not Those running two different things. off program code anymore. Right. He's right. He's making his own deci- decisions. Like, right. I'm going to go up this road. Yeah, that's sentience. Self-awareness is understanding that you're alive, which sure. takes place later. Um, So, uh, that's it. The, the movie states that in order to give life, you just need some electricity. Just, Frankenstein. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Everybody knows what you do. You strap him to a table and have a piece of lightning hit him. We should do that. We, we should Terry like try Gar that with something. In 1975. Like next time we, uh, what? What are we doing to Terry Gar? <laughs> 1975, she's in Young Frankenstein. It's fucking hot as shit. Yeah. Well, she's we're not going to. hot as Terry Gar gets. We may have to uh, hit Terry Gar with uh, some lightning right now because she's looking pretty corpsey. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Sir, <laughs> boo. All right, so let's do this. Next time we uh, find like a dead squirrel on the side of the road, let's take it back and just plug its tail into the to the house electricity socket. And can see we do we this can... over at Sam's place? Yeah, because... let's do it at Sam's. Uh-uh. Of course. Sam's got dead squirrels all over his place. Well, anyway. you know, he's a renter, so if we blow up his power, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, the landlord will come in and fix it. Not necessarily we have to. And best case scenario, we'll give life to a squirrel who will then fuck shit up. <laughs> Worse than Pet Cemetery, <laughs> Right, so let's do it at Sam's. Dress him up like Lord Fauntleroy first. Yeah, of though. course, of course. Yeah. I mean, we're going to do that whether it's successful or not, because look at it. Oh, I'm a little squirrel. We'll <laughs> take some memes with him. We'll shove a popsicle stick up his butt and make him walk around. I'm a squirrel dressed as a prince. <laughs> just do me a favor and do this behind the shop co and steal their power. <laughs> Nobody's paying attention to them right now. Okay, so... Uh, we get introduced to Gutenberg, who is Dr. Crosby, who is the lead programmer of the Saint uh, uh, yeah. robots, who originally he says specifically that his original intent for the Saints were to be marital aides. So that third arm, again, we'll have uh, to come back to that. Uh, they're mm-hmm. pleasure models. 
but for uh, the ladies. Are you sure? There's no place to put my wiener in this robot, I can tell. I look him over pretty good when uh, I see a robot. I'm like, where can I put my wiener? They've got prehensile hands. Ambidextrous, uh, or not ambidextrous, but... Uh, oh, they just pull your wiener off. It's got, like, they little, probably pull your wiener off. Oh, and they're just <laughs> like cold metal and get pinched at best. Robert Kraft right now is like, oh, that sounds nice. <laughs> no, he, he likes a, a nice, you know, sensual massage. <laughs> yeah, right. Not from robots. <laughs> Not from robots. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think he takes what he can get. Fucker. Um, <laughs> I got a billion dollars. I'm going to go to a strip mall to get a tug job. <laughs> what the fuck are you thinking, you dipshit? <laughs> <laughs> no, rich people are smart. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so him and... Dr. Ben, because we're not going to fuck with his last name every time. Jagupta. Yeah. Uh, Sanjay Gupta, CNN <laughs> <Doctor>. lead, d- <laughs> doctor, <laughs> medical expert. Jabatuya. Jabatu. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> oh, boy. Newton uh, Crosby and Ben Jabatuya. I don't. I don't. <laughs> and then we had Scroder. Scroder. Scroder, played by famed actor from Police Academy. <laughs> G.W. Bailey. G.W. Bailey. Uh, A.K.A. Captain Mauser, right. Bowser, 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 <laughs> Bowser, Bowser. One of my favorite scenes in any movie is the super gluing his head yeah, hands hand to his, his head. head. Yeah, and then he gets in Police Academy, too. I'm not sure. <laughs> I think it is, too. It's the one with... Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, Bobcat. Bobcat is yeah. in. I think he's in two and three. Actually, I think he's in most of them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I need <mean>, work. <where? laughs> <laughs> so uh, he's out. Uh, Crosby's out talking to the senators that are there. Uh, doesn't know what's going on with Johnny Five. Johnny Five gets pushed out of the building by a trash robot. Yep. And into the back of a trash truck. And is on his way to the landfill, I guess. He gets put into the back of a normal flatbed. Like, it looks like a stock truck for sheep or something. Yeah, right. But the world of endless technology, you go back, you regress sometimes, I guess. They don't have real garbage trucks. Right. They spazzed it all on these drink-making robots. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm not going to lie. If I had a robot that was like gin and tonic and handed it to me just the way I liked it, be like, give me six more, and I'll give the hand job a try. <laughs> <laughs> Again, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll build up a callus eventually. Yeah, right. But uh, get the uh, get the nine one one on speed dial there. <laughs> Gonna have to put it back on again. I can't stop trying. <laughs> We're getting your wiener stuck in a hot tub vent. Um, not that I know anything. He, he sees a butterfly, and so he, ah, oh, pretty butterfly, sure. and it flies off, so he flies off the garbage truck and lands in a field. Has trash on him now. Yeah, which I don't, the physics don't work. It okay. looks like somebody's sandwich. Yeah, because he wasn't in trash. The trash was contained, and none. Of, when he flies off, none of the trash containers open up onto him. Nope. So this is my theory, okay. is that there was a farmer there that was fixing the fence and he was just getting ready to have lunch uh-huh. and Johnny Five whizzed out of the truck and fucking killed him and stole a sandwich. <laughs> Die. He's That's like, why all the cows are staring at him like, oh my God, Farmer Bill. Yep. He just <laughs> liquefies him with this laser uh-huh. and then he just blows up into a puff of bloody steam but then the sandwich falls harmlessly onto Johnny Five. <laughs> that's what I think happened. And then his dog comes and starts eating the sandwich because that's what happens and it cuts away and then it comes back and then there's a dog eating sandwich off of him. Right. See, there was somebody out there working having a sandwich. So back at the lab, the Nova lab, eventually they determine to use the homing device. They find him six ways and they're like, oh, like Steve Gutenberg just being a dickhead. He's just a major doofus. And you are like, wow, you're being a dickhead until you get to know all the people he works with. And you're like... I would probably be broken and cynical like you at this point, too. You work yeah. with a bunch of fucking assholes. But, yeah, he's like, oh, well, did you try this? Did you try that? Did you try this? And he finds him like ten times. Right. Um, and then they freak out because he's leaving. He's like, he's not coming back. Ah, what? We got to explode him. We got to. What are we going to do? At no point is. Well, send Gary in a truck and just go get him. Disgust. They, he's on a fucking road. 
like five miles away at most. They've got to have ro- robot cookies. Like, hey, little boy, would you like a robot cookie? And then the robot gets close to the van and they grab him and they shut the door. I think you're confusing him with Theodore Rex. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Who does like cookies. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess that was last week. So they do send Team Scroder. Uh, uh, what are these guys? They're like they're like a private security force sure. for the Nova Lab. Mm-hmm. Like, like Blackwater, like Eric, Eric Prince. Stuff. Only they're like blue. Right. And they work about they their their performance is like space balls, right? They're like, you, you, I want to say that they're like Mega Force, but they're more like they're like more like Schmegma Force. They're, <laughs> I would say m- Minor Force. Nobody likes Schmegma Force, huh? Schmeg- no, I worked pretty hard on that one, guys. Really? <laughs> oh, these guys are like creamy balls. <laughs> They well, are like creamy balls. I don't even know if they're creamy. <laughs> yeah, they're, like, they're the ones that tell you, oh, creamy on the inside, and then you take a bite out of it. It's all fucking dried out. You don't and you're bite like, balls, Ew. Jackie. <laughs> you do if they're Linder. That are candy balls. Candy yeah. balls. Yeah, I think. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> you don't speak much Yiddish slang, do you? Yeah. <laughs> No. Okay. Um. Yeah. So they they drive up in their fucking tank car. Uh huh. And run into him. They run into him, and then they push him for a while, and then they see him, and then they're like, Rah! and they stop. But th- like, which causes him to fly off this bridge. Yeah. Into the Columbia River, but he has a parachute. He's got a parachute. What was their plan? Go get Johnny, or go get the robot, and okay, we'll crash into him, and then. Push him off a bridge. That's what our tactic. well. Maybe they thought he had like tires, and they're like, "We're just gonna push him until he blows one." Maybe it doesn't make any goddamn sense. I don't. And think then he'll they... be crippled. We could just throw him in the van. See, I think that they don't even know he's up there until he turns around and looks at him. They're like, "Wait a second, that's the guy!" <laughs> and then they hit the brakes, and then he falls off the bridge. And the bridge workers are like, "Hey, what are you doing?" Because that's what you do when you see a when you see a military vehicle push a robot off a bridge, and you're at work. You go, "Hey, what are you doing?" Because they're gonna tell you. My first thought tell you right is, then. "Fucking assassins! They're covering it up again." Assassins. This is not probably not the first time that they've had this happen because they have a ramp that goes off of this bridge. They're like. That's, right. that's the robot ramp. <laughs> that's the robot ramp. They're like, oh, they're doing it again. God damn it. The Astoria City Council <laughs> sets up. Well, we've got we've got robot assassins all over the place. We're probably going to need to buy a ramp. <laughs> yeah, we should put this one far away from the family fun ramp, <laughs> as the result will be horribly different. <laughs> Billy, uh- <laughs> The Astoria affair was never the same after July fifteenth. Yeah. I thought the color the color code was gonna work. Uh it didn't. <laughs> Apparently, uh you know, a burnt yellow and a light orange are very close to each other. Oh boy. Um <laughs> never gonna get Billy back. So they fuck off after pushing him off a bridge. Yeah. Where'd he go? Yeah. <laughs> He's got a parachute. He's clearly visible. It's at the end of the bridge that crosses the Columbia River into Astoria. There's a town right there that they Uh can see off the bridge. Well, I guess that's it. We don't know where he went. (laughs) Let's go back. They just hit the brakes, and then they're like, well, we got it stopped. Someplace. Let's go home. Mission accomplished. The (laughs) one's like, I saw this in a movie. He's sleeping with the fishes. Yeah, do they think he's dead? In the movie's defense, these two nutsacks never get to go out by themselves chasing the robot again. <laughs> After that, at least the uh, scroter decides to send full force commandos from here on out. Yeah, they might not have jobs anymore. Um, so it, on its way down, lands on Ali Sheedy's snack shack truck. She's uh-huh. a she's a food van person. Yep. And so it, she drives it back to her place, pulls up to her house, and her ex-boyfriend is there in his Trans Am. Very nice Trans Am. It's a fucking sweet Trans Am. Yeah. Uh, 
And then things escalate very quickly between these two. Like, one or both need to probably spend a night in jail if they already haven't. She doesn't really do anything worthy of jail. She starts the whole fucking thing, Sam, by yelling at him and then taking a baseball bat to his uh, Trans Am. He's trespassing. He's You're also just, trying to get her he's dog. He's in the driveway. He, I think you missed this part. Okay. He's over there trying to get her elderly dog into a dog kennel that he is now going to take and sell to science for experiments. Oh. Because she owes him money is his Ooh. justification. And so he's just going to take this dog and sell it to the chemical company and fuck you. Yeah. So then he's up for trespassing. Uh, what would be dog theft? Cruel to the animals. Petty theft, unfortunately. Petty theft. <laughs> Uh, hey, man, that's a misdemeanor. You go to yeah. jail for it. Uh, and uh, uh, probably cruelty to animals. And uh, he, then domestic assault. Uh -huh. So, because he chucks her to the fucking ground. Yes. Whereas all she does is hit a Trans Am with a bat. And unfortunately, crimes against sweetness <laughs> are not punishable by the uh, full weight of the law. Well, the good news is, is the Trans Am is so sweet. She hits it with a bat. And it doesn't even seem to bother it. No, it just bounces off. Yeah. At which point, that's when she decides to... Well, she gets shoved to the ground. Uh-huh. And then she's, like, throwing the bat in mid-shove. Right. So she's like... <laughs> but then you're like, why are you throwing a bat? He's pushing you. Right. Just swing it. But she throws it instead and almost hits her neighbor. Yeah, which isn't cool. No. But, uh, yeah, this guy's going to jail forever. Um, well, well, for like in a week. Oregon in 1986 for about an hour. Yeah, maybe an hour. And then he's going to then uh, probably shoot a bunch of people in Las Vegas because that's how it all works. No, he just goes to the bar with the sheriff and they get Dude. shit faced and the sheriff puts it in the Dude. ditch. And then they just look up the statistics to mass shooters and the domestic violence records. It's 99%. Oh. I thought you were accusing Oregonians of shooting Nevadans. Oh, they don't? The great... Oregon Nevada War of uh, 1958. <laughs> yeah. Problem is, is you slapped my sister. I did not. She's ugly. How yeah. dare you? <laughs> the parts of Oregon and Nevada border that border each other is just dirt. <laughs> right. <laughs> Nothing to fight over. Um. Wait. There's more than dirt in either state. Oh, sh you, you're talking about Astoria. It's beautiful over there. Astoria is beautiful. Yeah, the, the coast east, is beautiful. The west side of Oregon is much prettier. All than of Nevada east. sucks, though. <laughs> and I can't find the defense of Nevada. No. Nevada is try Reno's got a great basketball team. I got a full beer thrown at me from wearing a BSU fucking sweatshirt in Reno. <laughs> That's that true. can kiss my ass. <laughs> Good uh, if you're team. listening in Reno, we love you. Yeah, we love you. <laughs> Stop being so mean. <laughs> Kaepernick was a hell of a quarterback. Yep, Kaepernick was a great quarterback. Um, so that night, she uh, sees her van is rocking. Like, hey, what's going on in my snack shack? It looks like there's a disco party happening in this right. snack shack. There's smoke machine in there uh -huh. and uh, a bunch of lights that are flashing. Uh -huh. And it's rocking back and forth like. Oh, yeah. We're reliving the 60s now, my friend. Party. More leftovers from the original pleasure model design, I yeah, think. Right, right. Party mode. Uh, he's found a hot dog bun. He's like, well, time to experiment. Me, me, oh, me. boy. Um, what's he doing in there? Taking selfies of his wiener and sending him off on the internet. Oh, okay. That makes sense. He's just shaking it back and forth. He's making food. He's Why? checking out all the food. Why? He's, he's probably never seen food before. Oh, poor Johnny. <laughs> So, you know, like he's looking at the Rice Krispies going, what the fuck is this? He's, okay. he's trying to get input. He's learning. He's learning. Okay. Yeah. She goes in there. She sees Johnny. She thinks he's from space. Yep. Or that maybe he's got an exoskeleton that's, that's robotic and there's a little guy inside or something like that. But either way, it's, she doesn't think he's a manufactured robot. No. Because any sane person, that is the first thing that you go with. You're from we know space. about Oregon and how much weed they smoke, and mm. she is high as a kite. Yeah. And well, they even alluded to that in this movie. Oh, yes. okay, when? With uh, the old people. The old people, hmm? right, that have the tracking device in their truck, and she, he turns to her and goes, there's no weed in the glove box, right? Oh. Or she says, don't tell them about the weed. There is weed in the glove box. Yeah. yeah. Even the old people are reefed out driving around. Heck yeah, man. Yeah, she's she's also got like, she's an animal person. 
She's a fucking weirdo. She's got all of the critters. She's got, what, 17 cats? Like 17 cats, which is one thing. Hey, look, there's a lot of cat ladies out there. But she's also got badgers. Raccoons. And raccoons. Skunk, ferret. Ferret. Skunks. Magpies. Two chinchillas. Water buffaloes. A Loch Ness monster. uh, The Loch Ness monster would not. How dare you, sir? (laughs) He would not live in that (laughs) shithole. Isn't there supposed to be an Oregon sea monster? Um, yeah, girl, in the Columbia River. Yeah, it's like called uh, uh, Wallapagu or something like that. Huh. It's a really cool name. Uh, it escapes me, but uh, they also have Bigfoot over there. Yeah, we, we, got, big, we got Bigfoot over here. Yeah, too. Not not to the gr- degree of of Eastern Oregon. No, Bigfoot is a phenomenon in Eastern but or Western Oregon. We got some squatchers here. We do. I'm yeah. a squatcher. Well, you know, we have a, a professor, a tenured professor at one of our universities uh yeah. i think i've mentioned this before i don't know if we have that is an expert on bigfoot yeah one of the, the zoologist yeah the one of the leading yeah. experts on he hid it from the faculty squash. until they gave him tenure because then they can't really fire you you can see him <laughs> on the history channel with that weird ancient alien guy <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like oh and guess what bitches thanks for my tenure and now i'm gonna be a bigfoot guy <laughs> yeah I, I i work with i used to work with a guy that was a squatcher and he was like a pretty funny guy and he knew it was weird but he didn't care so he was like well mostly because he was trying to like relate it to make it seem normal so yeah mostly i just do it because i like to take pictures and hike Mm -hmm. and then like gave it a long pause and looked deeply into my eyes and went and search for sasquatch (laughs) (laughs) like you had to make sure you were cool what that's so weird he's like no really i'm looking for fucking sasquatch (laughs) just fucking deal with it (laughs) all right cool man if uh, if you're a uh, female uh, uh, Bigfoot hunter, would you be? Would you go around saying, "I'm a girl squatcher"? Uh, I'm a girl squatch. <laughs> God, he's... okay. That was watch pretty... the squatch go by. <laughs> I liked it. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Uh... <laughs> Uh, so she's like, come on inside, dude. Let's be friends, uh, spaceman. And uh, maybe we'll hang out and party and stuff. Uh, the you, first thing he does like is he weed? comes into her house and snaps a cat's neck. Right, right. Uh, runs over the, the raccoon. There's mm. <laughs> The coon's like, I explosion. was just making dumplings. <laughs> Takes a chinchilla and punches it through her skull. <laughs> it's not soft when it's puncturing your brain. <laughs> Uh, yeah, she shows him around. He learns about books and reads all of her books in like 10 minutes. She got hit hard by an encyclopedia salesman. <laughs> yeah, she did. <laughs> like that. She's got all of the Britannica series. I think that was just something that like, here's your passport to the 80s. How about a bunch of encyclopedias? Sure. <laughs> you know, but I, I'm not going to you know say too much about that because in the 80s, we didn't have the internet and shit like True. that for right. our younger right. listeners. Right. So you you went to the fucking library or your parents bought a set of encyclopedias. My parents had a, a, a thing of encyclopedias. I was probably the smartest kid in my fucking school. Yeah, we had encyclopedias, too. I was too poor for them. Yeah, that's why you're <laughs> a, That's why Sam's a big you're dumb poor. dog. Nope. I went to the library and I read those fuckers cover to cover. <laughs> Checkmate, bitches. <laughs> um. He also, like, fucks up her shit pretty good. <laughs> yeah, he fucks up her house nice. Yeah, like, he starts tossing fruit all over yep. the place, knocks all of her fine china over, and... Uh, she has a lot of fruit for, like, one person living there. She has a lot of animals, Jackie. She's yeah. insane. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that that fruit is just a free-for-all for all those animals. Yeah. It's like... Oh, if I know one thing, fucking animals love fruit. <laughs> I think doesn't... I don't fucking Ferrets know. Ferrets like any. fruit, I think. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> shit about, like... I was about to, you know, wisdom on animals besides those cats. And I was like, you know what? I only know about those cats. So you didn't read all the encyclopedias? You were lying? I forgot the part about what raccoons eat. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Wait, no, I didn't. Trash. (laughs) And then Dr. Crosby and Dr. Ben jab it to you. I'm sorry. That's his character name. Yep. Um, they're just driving around looking for Johnny Five like all day and all night. Yeah, his cousin shows up. Johnny Fives? No, Jabatuya's. Oh, it's, it's lady cousin. Oh yeah, sucker to me. 
<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Um, I didn't write the screenplay, goddammit. <laughs> We're never going to recover from that one. <laughs> Hit the stop button. They, they, like, they have no guidance. Like, even though they've got a homing device on this fucking thing, they're still just driving around. Sure. I think this is the first point that we realize that, that, uh, <laughs> the sense of direction on Gutenberg and Fisher's characters, or Fisher Stevens' character is non-existent. Yeah. Because it took, what, Johnny gets there in about a half hour. Right, like he's just on the other side of the Columbia, the Nova yeah. facility. They've crossed the bridge. He's in Oregon now. Uh-huh. And they take 16 hours to make the same trip. Wait, which way is the other end of the bridge? I don't know. Turn around on the start again. Um. <laughs> they probably just stop, like, right outside of the fence, go through, like, three doobies. Right. And then, uh, like, hey... Here, Atari's hiring. <laughs> Video games are going to be a big thing, man. It's going to be a big thing. This is 86, man. Atari's long gone. Damn. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I quit smoking this reefer. <laughs> Way too I'm long, man. The time. <laughs> it's like four years ago I was going to apply. Um, so, uh, so the next morning, Beasley the dog uh, pushes Johnny off a balcony and uh into her chickens because she's got those two yeah, she's got a chicken coop at least five geese yeah yeah i don't think they made it beasley's a dick beasley is a dick you know the first time we see him he's standing on top of the roof all right what are you doing beasley like, how did he get up there oh i meant to look up and to how many it. times has he pooped up there a lot and then it rains and then it just drips down mm-hmm. onto your porch mm-hmm then you get the bad case of the shit gutters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big problem with roof dogs. <laughs> uh, I was going to look up to see if that was Benji, and I didn't. So. Yeah. I don't Sorry, know. Beasley. We don't care about you. If anybody wants to do that for us, please do. But then he caught, you know, I think that the real conspiracy here was Beasley was like, huh, now is my chance. Take that, Donnie. And so he jumps at the. Johnny Five, right? Uh-huh. Trying to kill Donnie the chicken that lives in the coop. Okay. But he's not allowed to go into the coop, so he has to get Donnie another way. So he pushes Johnny Five down there to kill Donnie. Okay. It, it but advanced. then it backfires because then Donnie and Johnny Five are now friends because Donnie is, you know, Johnny Five's holding Donnie like, hi, Donnie. Damn it. Yeah, there was a shot clearly displaying that he didn't kill the chickens that he landed on, even though he weighs like 250. Right. Yeah. 250. I think he's guy weighs a, close to a ton. Yeah, uh, apparently the the big one, the biggest rig they had was 250 pounds. Really? Yeah. Huh. It's pretty light. You would have to be a an amazing puppeteer to move that much weight. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, maybe they had some electronics in there that would help it. You know, like when he's jumping or, you know, when he's going up and down, like moving his torso up and down. I mean, that mm-hmm. would be really heavy. Usually what happens is it's like E.T. You never... You only see the top half of them and the bottom half of them in so many shots. Right. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the times it's very lightweight stuff. But mm, Okay. So she sees, because he's upside down, she discovers that he's a robot. Uh, and she gets pretty pissed. Like, I thought you were alive, you son of a bitch, even though it's pretty clear that he's alive. Sure. From his outset. Uh, and, and this is where we really find out what kind of woman this person is. Because yeah. she's all about the fucking reward. Yeah, she's she's going to get her house repainted. Gonna... She's going to buy the neighbor's lot so that, you know, the sheriff will get off her back about all these fucking cats. Uh-huh. And the weed, obviously. And the weed. The, nobody cares about the weed. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the only reason she's being testy is because she hasn't had a bong hit yet. Because <laughs> she doesn't want to share with Johnny Five. Yeah. He's 250 pounds. He's going to take a lot to get high. Yeah. I mean, he's a robot, so it probably won't even work. <laughs> yeah, and then it'll just be like, my turn. And she'll be like, no, I'm bogarting it. <laughs> yeah. Then he gets mad and shoots her with a laser. Or she did take a bong hit, and she realized he's not from space, and she had this whole, she had like a list of 30 questions prepared about space, <laughs> and then she lost them because she was high. Right. <laughs> Wait, who are you? You're not a spaceman? What am I doing? Fuck. What day is it? Yeah. <laughs> I let you spill spaghetti on my counter, you fuckhead. Yeah. So she calls into the Nova and they send out the troops again. Like, oh, we found him. He's got a tracking device on him. You he's... know where he was the whole time. 
eight miles from you, <laughs> and it's taking you overnight to get to him when he's got a tracker on him. Yeah. So he doesn't understand what's going on fully yet, but he f- sees a grasshopper and starts playing with the grasshopper and jumping like a grasshopper until he lands on the grasshopper. And then she has to explain to him what death is. Even though he just read an entire volume of encyclopedias. Didn't come up one time in there. Yeah. I guess these were the uh, Encyclopedia Britannica lights. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I just want to back up for a second. Oh, boy. We're at the most critical part of the movie, and you want to go back to talk about Beasley the dog, don't you? I no. believe that the most critical part of the movie is uh, anytime Captain Mauser's in it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm going to say that Astoria has... The Atlas Obscura, which is a large column in the middle of their town. Right. And at one point, we see the doctors, right? And they're up on this thing, like, just chilling oh, out, looking out onto the thing. And then they get the call that Johnny Five is... And, you know, if you've been to a story, it's a very small fucking place. They could have been there in, like, five minutes. Yeah. Right. They're there later, but yes, it does later illustrate the fact that these guys just fuck around. Right. They just don't. They they are dawdlers. Okay, so are we good on them fucking around and we can go back to talking about Johnny getting sentience or self-awareness? Oh, this wasn't that important. It's the whole fucking movie! <sighs> Whatever. I thought that when Captain Mauser says his steak's going to get dry was the whole movie. <laughs> yeah. Stat! He's like, my wife's making me a steak right now. And I'm like, you should call her and tell her to wait till you get home because they don't take that long to make. Yeah, it's like a five-minute job, dude. So anyways, she explains to him the concept of mortality, and then he realizes that if the the Nova people find him, that they're going to disassemble him, which means, which equals death. And he doesn't like that, so now he's aware of his own life. And the first thing that you do when you're self-aware is you steal a food truck. Yeah. Yep. You steal the snack shack and get the fuck out of town. Yep. Or you crash it into the river. Yeah. She's able to uh, really run this thing down, hop on the back, get yeah. in like she should have. Maybe she was going to be in a commando before all of the weed. Yeah. Watch out. Usain Bolt. She's fast. Mm hmm. She's quick. And she's in boots. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like heel boots. Yeah. She climbs on the back and starts like trying to get him to stop. But she's like also guiding him through town. Yeah. Like turn right here. Where are you going? Um. But, yeah, they end up uh, crashing into the river almost. And then Gutenberg and Dr. Racism pull up. Yep. And uh, get told that he's alive. Don't t- don't sell him out. But then Mauser shows up as well. And their initial plan to capture Johnny Five is to shoot, shoot him. Everybody. Everybody. There's clearly the people you work for and an innocent bystander there... If you're taking up offensive positions, you should be unseen. You definitely don't want to shoot at them, but that's they just like stand in plain sight and start shooting, basically. Well, and they've seen these robots in action, right? They know that if the robot feels threatened, mm-hmm. it's going to go into defensive mode and it's going to fucking kill you. It and the robot's not going to miss. We should not fail to mention that part of the actual Saint acronym. It's not Steve's acting isn't terrific. <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> is, is the N stands for nuclear. Yeah. It's got a nuke laser, which isn't a real thing, but it blows shit up in this movie. Probably want to be tread very lightly with this shit, guys. Yeah, you want to aim for a certain wire on this guy with a sniper rifle. Or or maybe have a remote deactivator. <laughs> I mean, you know, you try, try you that. A tracking. Well, they did actually try that. It fried. And yeah. Or like, maybe, okay, then like an EMP or something. Like maybe I'm with Jackie. A 50 cal would put that thing in half. Yeah, yeah. You you don't want to just start spraying AK-47 rounds at it. He's like Johnny Five alive. <laughs> what was that? Yeah. That was a 50 cal. Just ripped him in half. Yeah, I took care of that. Pick up the pieces. <laughs> Hopefully there wasn't any fish in the lake behind him because they're they're in half too. <laughs> uh, anybody like salmon? <laughs> Too well, bad, because this one, there ain't much left. <laughs> you, you ever seen a salmon get hit by a 50 cal? It ain't pretty. That's that's how we fish in Alaska. <laughs> well, you have to. You can see Russia from your house there. Right. 
Well, you don't know if the commies are dressed up like fish. <laughs> like fish. <laughs> That is the largest salmon I have ever seen. It is certainly a Russian operative. Yeah. And not Shoot a salmon. It. <laughs> Those sneaky reds. Have you thought about <laughs> private security? I think you've got the mind for it. You know, and you've got to get your own private salmon that have video yeah. cameras on their heads, <laughs> you know, so that they can identify the would-be commies that are coming towards you. Plus, you can identify which ones are yours by yeah. the cameras. <laughs> On their heads. <laughs> hey, you know what? You know that that's an American fish unless it's been turned. The CIA tried to sneak a, a fucking robot cat into the fucking Kremlin. So, you know what? Uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they put cameras on dolphins. They do it. Yeah. And they're like, where's that dolphin going? And the guy's like, it's a fucking dolphin. It's going to really do what it wants. Get me the 50 cal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Nora, that's such a hard place to work. Tuna anyone? <laughs> It's a mammal, sir. Anyway. <laughs> it's a chicken of the sea now. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so, yeah, they start blowing the hell out of Johnny Five. He shoots back, blowing up some people's boats. <laughs> yeah. The real crime is against the citizens of Astoria, right, Oregon. Right, indeed. Oh, <laughs> and the, uh, especially the marine enthusiasts. They're out of some boats here. But fortunately, Gutenberg sneaks past the bullets and, and powers Johnny down by hitting his, of what appears to be the off power button. button or the, the, the joystick button off of an Atari 2600. Actually, it looks like the red button if you had like the mega pad for the Nintendo with the big one. Yeah, right, right. It's yeah. that button. <laughs> um, So they load him on a truck. They're taking him back to Nova, but his head has power. I don't sure. really get this part. Is it because he has life that he's powering himself? But only his head. Well, there's we, no way to explain this one. I, I'm, I'm going to run with this because at this point in time, he removes one of his arms because it's gotten fucked up and just bolts another arm onto him. There is robot parts on Johnny Five and then there's none there's sentient parts on Johnny Five. There's man parts on him too. Yeah, right. Uh so maybe just the lower half is still robot and he's just is that's where his consciousness exists is in his head and that's why it has power. Yeah, uh, whatever. I, I, just whatever. <laughs> I don't think you can explain this one away. Yeah. They're like, well we gotta get him turned back on. What are we gonna do? Yeah. Yeah, and then he drops a wrench onto his his joystick button and powers the rest of his body up. Because yep. if there's anything that I've learned, you can just drop shit on buttons and it's going to work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Science. It's never happened. He once. kicks out uh, Fisher Stevens and this other weird looking guy. Right. Steals their van. Yeah. Takes off. Yeah. Flips them off. Right. Grabs That's what the he's seat. Supposed to be doing. This was shit that I thought was so funny by the, the third time they burned this joke where he's throwing the seat out of the driver's door. Man, when I was like eight, I thought that was hilarious. Mm -hmm. It wasn't funny at all it's as an adult. Funny. No, I don't even know why I found it funny as a kid. Like this, your mom's a snowblower thing. I get that, but sure, kicks the. Ah, oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> he does like, like the, the seats. seats. Okay, why is that funny, kid? Um, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but I read the encyclopedias. You stupid 1980s version of myself. Uh huh. Which is basically the same as I am now. Stupid. If I met my 1980s. Six self, I'd be like, oh my god, you are so fabulous! <laughs> and I would teach myself how to dress properly and be a fashionista and not be shy and punch that little fucker in the nose that called me thunder thighs. I just look at myself as a young kid and go, it's gonna hurt. And then my young self would say, what? And I'm like, all of it. <laughs> then I just walk off. <laughs> <laughs> then I'd be more prepared for life. Yeah, right. <laughs> You'd be like, Burt Reynolds is an immortal kid. What? No! Uh, also, drill bits on the end of arrows don't blow up all of <laughs> Vietnam in Rambo 2 that happens, and it's not real. So I thought that was real for a while. Okay, we're going to skip ahead a little bit here. <laughs> um, that night, uh, uh, Stephanie, uh, uh, what's her name? Ellie Sheedy's character. Sure, Stephanie. She goes to take a bath, but the reporters are there and like, what's going on with this robot thing? And she's like, fuck off. But her ex-boyfriend sees her on the news, which comes into play later. 
about the robot and that they're offering a $25,000 reward for it so he gets an idea. She then goes to take her bath, and Johnny Five returns to her house and sees her in the bathtub and likes her boobies. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Further reinforcing that he already had sex model programming. Sure. Yeah, dude, he's a weirdo. That and the giant multi-tool penis. Correct. Uh, That we see in the next shot. Mm Mm-hmm. Because he's, like, opening a can of soup or something. Yep. With his dick. Ring. Randy. Um, yeah. Then he wants to, he watched the Saturday Night Fever and wants to dance with her. And she's, she's snuggling up to him pretty hard. I mean, like, there's some, I, I think this is going, I see why the, 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 the yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know How I, long has she been in the fucking bathtub? Long enough to, you know... For Saturday Night Fever to be over. Long enough to uh, get clean, but not too long so that she gets all pruney. Right, because she's got an activity later. I think this is where they fuck. Sure. <laughs> this is what I'm getting at. I think they bone down. I think weird things happen. Uh, and Johnny Five, it never gets referenced again because Johnny Five doesn't really understand it yet because it wasn't in the encyclopedia uh, uh, where a lady has sex with a robot. I don't think that's a, 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 a heading, so he doesn't know anything about it. I think his penis arm is too big. Mm. Or Ellie Sheedy got around. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, no, I didn't hear that. That's mean. So I found, I took more offense to this sequence because uh, the director mm-hmm. of Saturday Night Fever was none other than the director of this film, John Badham. Really? So he's blowing his own horn right here. Interesting. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Um, the ex-boyfriend drives up, and he's got a fucking rifle. This guy ke- shouldn't have a gun. It's Oregon in the 80s. God damn it. Yeah, dude, and they live in the wilderness. At this point in time, the story is not... It's a logging town. Yeah, it's not the town that we know today. Uh, it's a tourist trap. Yeah, it's... The story is fairly sizable in the 80s. 30,000 people, yeah. Okay, well, whatever. Either 30, way. 30,000 people is nothing. The size of the town doesn't have anything to do with the fact that this man has a gun and breaks into her house and then commits assault on her. I don't like it. She doesn't ever call the police on this guy. Not one time. There's stalker issues. There's mm-hmm. obviously physical violence. And now he's got a fucking rifle. This guy needs to give me his car and then jump off the bridge. <laughs> you can take him to the robot ramp. Yeah, I'll drive you there. <laughs> Is this the robot ramp or the family phone ramp? I can't remember which one was. Here, put on these roller skates. I'll push you. <laughs> burnt yellow and which one was light orange. <laughs> Let's try them both. <laughs> that was fun. Okay, it's the other one. <laughs> uh, so Johnny runs out. And disassembles his Trans Am, which I, I kind of liked that, this, this sequence. Uh, he starts shooting at Johnny, and Johnny uses the flywheel to deflect bullets. Uh, and it's then, a brake rotor. Yeah. Way yeah, to go, fucking was, retard. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, yeah, let's get... Let's oh, get. you <laughs> fucking know. I <sighs> do know what a brake rotor looks like. Do you know what a flywheel even fucking does? Flies the wheel. Correct. Sure Absolutely. Does. You read the encyclopedia as well. Yes, I did. Um... <laughs> Then, beep, 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 girl. You fly right. That way you're a wheel, not a square. <laughs> Pass me that joint. <laughs> you know, Bronson and Pinchot was almost in this movie. Belky. Guess remember Belky? Perfect Strangers? Who was he? Where was he supposed to be from? He charmed all of America. I don't know. Yugoslavia, I thought. No, it was, it was a made-up made up country. It was a yeah. made-up country because yeah. he was being... It was like amb- Parmistan. Ambiguously ethnic. He's, he was the lone escapee from Parmistan, from the regime of Parmistan. Sure. <laughs> Brought the plans to Reagan for the Star Wars <laughs> system. Belky. Yeah, Belky. I could see Belky palling around with Reagan. There was a whole bridge of spies sequence for him to escape. You know, he had to meet Tom Hanks and then get the plans to the Parmistani uh, Star, Wars. Star Wars program. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Makes sense. Send in the karate gymnastics. Um, so, yeah, and then he ends up shooting this guy's pants off, which is pretty funny. It takes a while, but that's what he does. Yeah. 
Gutenberg meets her for beers like the next day at some diner bar place. The Black Lion. Yeah. yeah. And uh, to talk to her about him being alive, uh, but she Scroder's there and overhears them, and it's all a big trap for sure. him to find out where Johnny Five is. Even though the robots he brought with him have already found and engaged Johnny Five. Right. Yeah, they're outside shooting at Johnny Five with their fucking nuclear lasers. Yep. So... I guess Operation Recapture the Robot never really got off the ground. It was always Operation Explode the Robot. And at this point, these robots are operating on their own. Yeah, they're freelancing pretty hard here. They weren't supposed to be able to do that yeah. by the when they are always like, oh, they just run programs. That's a pretty good program. Go catch Johnny <laughs> Five. How long did it take you to write that one? Because I bet it, I, mean, I, I guess it probably takes you less time than. It takes to drive to Astoria from Washington and right. Gutenberg. Jesus. Yeah. Um, yeah, Johnny Five then defeats all of them with mud and traps and poop. Yeah, because they're the greatest military technology of all time. Correct. And mud. They, and can't hit him. Yeah, mud takes him down. <laughs> mud takes him down. <laughs> well, you know, that is the nicest outhouse I've ever seen. To be honest, the very first time you see them, at the very beginning, when they're blowing up all the ordnance, you're just like, I bet those lasers would work better if a human was using them. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, these robots are dumb. Um, yeah, because if one drives into an outhouse, and then the outhouse explodes. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, and you got to watch out for from that. From the poop side. The robot screams, somebody light a match. Because uh, I'm covered in poopy. <laughs> yeah. It's exploded on me. Uh, then he reprograms them into being the Three Stooges, which unfortunately is not as funny as the Three Stooges. Not, well, that's the problem is, is they kind of, that's why they're them yeah. is because they were the ones that were funny at doing that. Not three robots. N nobody else can do it like they did it. Um, Even though I think when I was a kid, I thought it was funny. I didn't understand it because I've never liked the, free, the Three Stooges. It was like when we were watching this movie right then. I'm not trying to, but they left the Three Stooges on just long enough that you're just going to end up laughing at them because it's you're like, this isn't funny. It's just people hitting. You. <laughs> 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 Those guys are funny. Exactly. Well, it is kind of funny to watch somebody getting hit in the face. Yeah. <laughs> not gonna lie. Just, we like violence. Like, this isn't. Oh, God damn it. It's hilarious. <laughs> I don't want it to be funny. It's hilarious. But when, as a kid, I never liked them. But, I didn't either. But watching them here, I, Sam's right. It was the violence, and I thought it was fucking funny, and I and laughed. Just dumb sound effects. It's just, the Foley oh, work that, that yeah. takes it over the top. Yeah. Um. Anyways, so, <laughs> Scroder and team then try to kidnap her to get the information about Johnny Five, but Johnny Five busts through the wall and rescues her and takes off. And Gutenberg, they go chase him. Gutenberg goes outside where Dr. Racism is. And Dr. Racism says, so how was your date in his own unique way of speaking? Uh -huh. Did you guys make out? Tell me all about it because I've got a massive boner right now. Yeah, he's like, I got a major Woody. And I'm like, oh, shit. Dude, what? Well, I wouldn't get in a van with him. Dude, well, what? No, it was like, that was the point. Where I was like, wait a second. Okay. Maybe a kid that's like five or six doesn't know what that means. I'll let this one slide. Yeah, right. But then the parents have to look at each other like, why did they just do that? That's not a funny joke, nor does it. Tell me all about it. I'm going to beat off in front of you. Yeah. That's when you're a parent and you go, don't ask, don't ask, don't ask, don't ask. It's not even if the kid asks. The parent is asking. Why did he say that? That's disgusting. I mean, it's. You know, a natural, beautiful thing to have a Woody, but man, keep it to yourself, especially with your bros there. Like, Dude, it's not okay, though, to be pervy, I think is what you're okay getting It's not okay to be at. pervy. Yeah, it's not okay to be pervy. It's fine to be sexually turned on, all that good stuff, but don't be a fucking tell pervy. Me, tell me all about it. I, I'm going to pull my dick out and, and beat off while we drive until I jizz all over the windshield. It's cool, right? You like that sort of stuff, don't you? And then you're like, well, you can really hit the windshield from there? <laughs> How long have you been waiting? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, 
Johnny comes back and uh, makes uh, Gutenberg drive him to Stephanie because he wants them to hook up, I guess. Yeah. Um, and they spend all night trying to prove that Johnny's not alive, but eventually he proves to them that they do. By telling a joke that's not funny. Right. You are alive because you laughed. And I think, doesn't Johnny kidnap Gutenberg? Yeah, he yeah. does. That's what happened. He kidnaps right. him. Yeah. So. But then, you know, I find it interesting that the plans for these... Um, you know, military million dollar robots. Mm-hmm. Eleven million dollars each. Right. Almost as expensive as a missile. Correct. Are just hanging out in this Nova van because he's got the manual for this robot. Yeah. And he's sitting there taking notes in it about the rewiring that Johnny Five has done to himself. Uh huh. And I'm like, yeah, that's real secure. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Well, they're yeah, not. not really they're right. contractors. That's the thing. They can get loosey goosey. Yeah, that's true. They hired Captain Mauser. Yeah. Yeah. Idiots. Um, Nova pulls up because they found where they're at. I don't really remember how and I don't really care. Um, which causes Johnny Five to like, don't shoot him, don't shoot him. But he's in the van hiding, doing something. The van's moving all around. And then he busts out of the back of the van and they can't shoot him because he's too far away and he's about to get away. But then they got a chopper and it's got missiles on it. And it shoots the missiles and it's missing and Johnny's about to get away. But then a missile hits him and explodes. Johnny's down. Not a touchdown. Not a touchdown. <laughs> I guess I was, I'm pretty sure I was sad when this happened the first time. Oh, I saw yeah, it. man. Yeah, I, was pretty... it, I, I will give it credit because it is delivered like, uh, yeah, Johnny didn't make it, dude. He gets blown the fuck up. He gets blown the fuck up. But it was all a ruse. While yeah. he was in the back of the van, he built a replica of himself out of the spare parts and said, "Well, that would it. explain why the van was rocking." Right, right. He accidentally wired it the same way as he wired it himself, and it's like, "I'm alive," and he's like, "Yeah, you are. Hey, run that way. <laughs> Go. <laughs> I need you to do something for me, friend. I am your creator. Yeah. You will do as I command or face my wrath. Go that way. Go that way. <laughs> Fast. <laughs> Fuck. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not a good father. <laughs> Um, no, I don't think that one had sentience. You got to hit, get hit by lightning, right? That's how it works. I guess. <laughs> so they're like, cool, Johnny. Good to see you. I'm glad you're not dead. Let's move to Montana. Yep. End of the movie. They all moved to Montana. Well, this guy's got to have just fucking buku box, right? Gutenberg? Yeah. Well, he did invent Private a, scientist yeah, I mean, invited, uh, inventing this yeah. scale of a robot. Right, right. His dad g- gifted him 40 acres when he died yeah. in Montana, so his dad probably had money. What Oof. do you guys think you're going to get when your dads die? My dad is dead. I got $3,000. I paid off my car. We'll probably get some of the shit back that I left at his house. <laughs> <laughs> See, and that's what I'm thinking. Which I'm... I could have any time I wanted. Your plastic Pizza Hut collectible movie merchandise mugs. Yeah, those Batgirl mugs. Wait, no. It was Catwoman. <laughs> and they're pretty faded, so he can keep those. I think I'm going to find a box of all of the shit that I've ever given my dad that he didn't want. That's what I'm going to end up with. Yeah. And it's just going to have my that's name exactly on it. That's what happens. And I'm going to be like, oh. That is exactly what happens. Every ah, Christmas that, gift that you've expensive. ever given will come back to you. Well, I hope not because I did give my dad shoes last Christmas and he has been wearing them. I kind of hope he, he throws them away eventually. Yeah, they're probably going to be pretty sneaky. Um, let's move on. Questions. Jackie, let's start with you. I only have one. Okay, bring it. Do they make Mrs. Five mm-hmm. and kids and it becomes a sitcom, right? Okay. So oh, they do make... Mrs. Five and and some kids. Good thing you know your own question. And it becomes a sitcom. What do you think it's about? Uh, Robots that have kids. Well, they... (laughs) (laughs) uh, Clearly a butler and a precocious uh, African-American child who is the neighbor will have to get involved. Clearly. See, I think that you get Susan Summers as an odd roommate. And then in place of Mr. Roper, Mm -hmm. you have Balky. (laughs) And it's like Three's Company with robots and Balky. And racism. I think Mr. Belvedere is in there somewhere. Yeah, you know, Mr. Belvedere Bob, Bob would Bob not appear in the same in the same uh, series as Talkie. Balky. Okay, how about Bob Euchre? Let's get Bob Euchre. He fits. <laughs> and then I think that we have things like, you know, number five eventually has a drinking problem. Ooh, <laughs> he's, at cheers all, he's at cheers all the time. And they're like, hi, five. And he's like, hi. Barfs all over Norm. And, yeah. Yeah. 
And then she turns to alcohol, so she's always got like a 1950s dress on. Man, season four of Robot Family got real dark. Yeah, that's what actually what happened to Shelly Long in Cheers is she got vaporized by Johnny Five when he was drunk. <laughs> He's like, take that bitch, cut me off. Sam? How long do you think they're actually in a relationship? Uh, forever. Really? These two are destined to they, be together, Sam. They have the same hair. They have the same haircut, <laughs> but I think that's where it stops. And they're both nutty. I, I think that they moved to Montana, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. And as they're packing up all her animals, he's like, oh, <laughs> another one? Oh, I think he's got baggage of his own that we don't and have then, to delve into because we never see his house. See, and that's what I was going to say, mm-hmm. right? Then then they get to Montana, but he's had all of his shit packed up by a mover. Mm-hmm. So like, there's like a fucking bobcat sitting there with a bow around its neck. And he's like, look, I got you a present for our new ranch. Yeah. And We're- she's like, oh, great. And then, you know, we fast forward to six months to a year and he's like, I have told you so many fucking times to pick up that raccoon shit. Mm-hmm. I am done mm-hmm. stepping in this mm-hmm. shit to, when, every morning when I come out here to make coffee. I swear to God, that goddamn raccoon is doing it on purpose. Nah, 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 nah. And then she's like, <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, then maybe Mr. Pickles doesn't like you, fuckhead. <laughs> Johnny Five, shoot him in the nuts. And then the cops have to come out again. But then they, they <laughs> roll together, hating each other for yeah. the rest of their lives. Yeah. Welcome to Montana. Yep. And, <laughs> and, and the cops, like, they know... They know. They're like, all right, bring the dark gun because, you know, depending on how he did the fight, it's going to be, you know, depending on how he did the fight, it's going to be, <laughs> you know, the the bobcat might actually be attacking Dr. Cooper. The tranquilizer gun. Yeah. Mm. See, I think that she falls asleep on the way uh-huh. and then wakes up and goes, you know, fucking say Eastern Montana. <laughs> Fuck, you may as well have a thousand acres on the moon. <laughs> It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Amazon won't even deliver out of here. <laughs> um, if you had to move to Montana with one of them, who would it be? Johnny Five. Is that an option? <laughs> yeah, is that yep. an option? Okay. Oh, I thought it was just between the two perms. Okay. So Johnny Five, Sam? No, I'll, I'll take Ali. Do I have to? Uh, you have to go with one of them. And You're- it's Ali Sheedy or Stephanie? Stephanie. Johnny Five. Yep, that's what uh, I think as well is my question, um, which leads me to my next question, a very important question. If we're all taking Johnny Five, is he a monster, bud? <gasps> he doesn't befriend any children. Yeah, he's. we're not kids. She's mentally like a child. Oh, she, oh my not God. No. Really? Some of her actions are pretty. <sighs> Either way, here, let me refresh the rules. She's just stoned. Yeah. Let me refresh the rules of Monster Bud for for everybody that's listening who may not be familiar with our theory of Monster Bud. We have three rules for being a Monster Bud. Being befriending a child is not one of really? them. Really? Yeah. You must be annoying. Yeah. Uh, you must be an uninvited guest. Okay. And you must fuck up your life or the, the person who you befriend's life. Okay. That's well, the definition not, of a Monster Bud. He's he, not uninvited. Yes, he is. Yep. She says, please come into the house. No, he... Falls into her life without her saying, I am going to go buy a Johnny Five. A monster bud. He is uninvited into her life. He is a monster bud. He's a monster bud. But Theodore Rex, by those rules, is still not a monster bud. Theodore Rex is not a monster bud. Um, Whoopsie Goldberg might be. Um, So we're taking a monster bud to Montana. That's how bad Stephanie and Dr. Crosby are. Well, you know, you got 40 acres. In the eastern part of Montana, you're going to need somebody to entertain your ass and to get really good uh, satellite reception because, you know, he's got the antenna. Yeah. So you want him around so that you can actually listen to the radio or watch TV. You're like, all right, stand a little closer to the TV, Johnny. And you can use his nuclear laser to turn all of the dirt that's in eastern Montana into like a glass castle. <laughs> oh, that Fortress would be cool. of solitude. Yes. <laughs> Like Dr. So, Manhattan on Mars. If he's a monster bud and we're taking him to Montana, does that make him the best monster bud of all time? Because let me put it this way. I'm not fucking taking Trumpy to, to Montana. I am not taking Mac to fucking Montana. I'm not taking... I'm not taking Munchie. I'm not taking Gilgameth. Mash. Or whatever that guy, little poop monster. Gilgameth. I'm going to give him, yes, highest rated for right now. Yeah. yeah. He's our best monster bud so far. That's fantastic. 
Other questions, guys? I got one more. What military purpose do his eyebrows serve? <laughs> they apparently in they had arguments over this in writing mm-hmm. because uh, the director, uh, of course, John Padham, he wanted no part of the robot to not serve a purpose. And finally, it was said that the flaps were just shields for the lenses. Shields for the lenses. Oh, so they're like eyelids for people. Yeah. Now, what's Pro- funny... Like protective against debris? No. So what's funny is if you go to... Like, that, that had to get into an argument, like... And that the director and the writer are fighting over this when the camera guy's like, yeah, that works perfectly. Because you have to use barn doors like that, or you have to have a matte box on a camera. Because if it gets direct sunlight, it gets lens flare, and you can't see shit. Oh, I see. F- filmmaking. It served a filmmaking purpose. Well... If it's a mechanical lens like that, mm-hmm. it would be blinded by sun hitting the lens in the right angle. So having a shield to create, to keep direct sun vectors away from the lens would actually serve a purpose. Oh, oh, yeah. oh military purpose. I mean, it can't, so it can it see shit. It would not be able to see if the hit, sun hit the Got light it. just right. And it might shoot uh, its nuclear laser at the White House, per se. Yeah. Or kittens. Or kittens. Rip their eyebrows off. Jesus. Yeah. All right, there you go, Sam. Good work. Uh, final recommendations, guys, on Short Circuit. Uh, I'm going to start. Don't. I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy it. I think it's not a good revisit because it's frankly just too goddamn annoying. Sam? When I was saying that I was like, I'm going to give the Woody a hall pass because I would say that you could watch this with your kids and tell Steve Gutenberg says, holy shit, in the next scene, and you're like, I gotta wait till my daughter's eight to watch this really now. It's really racist. It's so really racist. I don't really want that. And it's just not like and the it robot. It supports a sexual and assault and yeah. It kind of sucks. It kind of sucks. Jax, I'm gonna give it a do not. Yeah. Let me tell you about the best line in the movie. Your mother was a snowblower. <laughs> That's and, it's and he stupid. says it behind a tree, and I'm sure you can find a clip on YouTube. And it's dumb. Um. The rest of it, I, I'm with you guys. It was racist. It was sexist. And at the end of the day, it's pretty annoying. It's yeah. not that funny. Yeah. No, it's not. Everybody um, just needs to kind of shut up. Yeah, we were wondering. It was like, there's got to be a reason this isn't replayed on USA every quarter, right? Uh-huh. There wasn't one reason. There's about 10. Yeah. 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 yeah don't. Um, Got some listener feedback that I want to get to this week from a uh, good fan, Jack B. He says... I recently watched some movies from my childhood after a gap of about 10 years and thought that given this week, the movie this week, it would be appropriate to talk about them real quick. Let me paint you a picture about the first of these movies. No, we don't want to see a picture of your wiener, Jack B. Jesus. Dude. Quit sending those things over the Facebook. I think she actually wants you to send a dick pic. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Reverse psychology. Put put a little hat on it so that it's disguised. Put a red tie on it. It'll look like the president. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Let me paint you a picture about the first of these movies. One, it's direct-to-DVD. Two, it's made for kids. Three, it's all CGI, early 2000s CGI. Four, it has a $5 million budget. Five, it has zero big-name voice actors. Six, its sole purpose is product placement. Seven, the company making it has never made movies before. Think about it for a second. All dogs go to heaven. No, that's... Okay. Uh, That was Don Bluth, dude. Uh, Yeah. Like, one of the best animators of all fucking time. Uh, How much of a horrible train wreck does that sound like? It sounds like a recipe for an unbearable slog. Turns out these movies are actually kind of fun. I'm referring to the original trilogy of Lego Bionicle movies. I never oh. saw any of those. I didn't either. I didn't know that those existed. Yeah, I did. They're, I think they're streaming all over. Uh, put out between 2003 and 2005. Mask of Light, Legends of Mutro Nua, and Web of Shadows. Huh. Despite on paper sounding like they should be unwatchable, they're actually very entertaining as far as movies like this go. The movies consist of robots that control the elements fighting against evil in the form of evil creatures with snake hands a giant horde of sentient spiders, and a very hammy Sauron-esque master villain. Everything is surprisingly quality when mediocre would have sold. There were people behind these movies who cared. They're not amazing movies by any stretch, but they're not nearly as bad as they should be. The movies create a science fantasy world which stands out for how unique it is, and Christopher Gaze, as the wise old man narrator, is now my bar to judge other narrators by. That's high praise. 
Uh, these three movies are only on DVD and not streaming anywhere, so I'm an asshole. I thought I saw them. Um, because of that- Did, I, Have you read this before? You no, 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 no. are reading it no, now? No, I, I want to oh, be okay. surprised by news. It's like you guys. Oh, okay, uh, okay. These three movies are only on DVD and not streaming anywhere. Because of that, I can't recommend you buying them. But if you already have them from your childhood or, or can watch them some other way, then I wholeheartedly recommend you see at least one of them. One of these may be a pick from me in the future as a bad movie debunked if you guys are ever in the middle of a string of turds. Now. When are we not in a string of turds? The entire show is a string of turds. <laughs> now on to the 2009 soft reboot starring Michael Dorn as essentially God. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Michael Dorn. Yeah. Huh. So there you go. If you got those, uh, give them a sh uh, give, recheck. The, Skip the Johnny Five. whole thing with the Lego company is they just never really got they never really made anything crappy right right they managed to avert being crappy yeah, in, yeah. at every turn right uh lego movie 2 out sure. right now yeah doing good all the lego video games fan fantastic now we come to the part where everybody's been waiting for as announced last week the smapfa nominations uh if you are uh unaware of what the smapfas are Go back and listen to any of our Smatfa episodes, but it's our award show for the sure. previous year's movies. So, uh, and it should be noted that we did uh, movie field trips on three of those: Rampage, of those, yeah. Hurricane Heist, and Slenderman. So, there you go. All worth a listen. And the nominees are for Best Bad Actor: Dwayne the Motherfucking Rock Johnson for Rampage, of course. Um, Toby Kebbell for Hurricane Heist, the lead there. Eric Johnson, uh, Fifty Shades Freed. Who played the villain? Oh, the rapey yeah. Jack. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought he was hilarious. Uh, Travante Rhodes in Predator, the fifth guy. I think looks like Fifty Cent. Sure. <laughs> Shaq in Snow Dogs. Shaq in Snow Dogs, huh? Yeah, he was the voice Show of uh, Show Dogs. Did I say Snow Dogs? Yep. I think I do that every time. <laughs> well, you know, if we had a lifetime achievement for one movie, Cuba Gooding Jr. could get it for <laughs> yeah. Snow Dogs. What, what voice was he in that movie? Um, he was the the big dog. He was Shaggy. the detective. No, 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 detective no, no. dog. No, d d that's ludicrous. Was the detective dog? Yeah, he oh. was the big big. Oh, dog. Oh, he's the one that looked like a mop or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yes. Okay. Hey, it's Mushe. Um, uh, Gerard Butler, Hunter Killer, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, Rampage, Jamie Fox, Robin Hood. What? what? Um, <laughs> Jackson Rathbone, Samson, Tom Jane, Predator, Hugo Weaving, Mortal Engines. Jake Lacey in Rampage, and Tom Jane gets two for AXL. Mm. Yeah, good odds for Tom Jane. <laughs> sort of. Uh, worst bad actor nominees, Taylor James, Samson, the lead. Dwayne, the motherfucking Rock Johnson, Skyscraper. Bruce Willey, Death Wish. Taron Edgerton, Robin Hood. John Travolta, Gotti. John Boyega, Pacific Rim Uprising. Oh, really? Yeah, mm. dude, that guy stunk. Uh, Will Arnett, Show Dogs. It was bad. Yeah, not good. Uh, Jason Clark, Winchester. I think Jason Clark could get nominated every time he's in a movie. That guy stinks. Uh, Toby Kebbell. <laughs> Except for in... Uh, with, uh, yeah, they did that again. With him and Jessica Chastain, the... Uh, Sicario? No. The one that Bigelow did after Hurt Locker. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's the worst, worst part of Zero Dark Thirty. Well, he does a good job being a dick, but he does a nice job. He's the worst part of the whole... Production. No, no, that guy stinks. Huh. Um, uh, Jason Clark, Winchester, Toby Kebbell, Hurricane Ice, which makes him uh, the only double nominee. Uh, or no, Jackson Rathbone is too. Um, and then Alex uh, Jackson Rathbone from Samson, Alex McNichol for AXL. Best Bad Actress, the actress whose shitty performance we enjoyed the most. Julia Goldani Tellis, I believe is how you say her name, the lead in Slender Man. Uh, Maggie Grace for The Hurricane Heist. Olivia Mung, Predator. Dakota Johnson, Fifty Shades Free, which I think it's the first time she's ever been nominated for any of them. Usually we yeah. kind of are indifferent about her appearances. Uh, Natasha Leon, uh, Show Dogs. Helen, Dame Helen Mirren for Winchester. Bryce Dallas Howard, Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom. Joey King, Slender Man. Melon Ackerman, Rampage. Melissa Bologna? Bol Bol Bologna. Bologna. <laughs> what's her baloney's first name <laughs> hopefully <laughs> melissa <laughs> sam i'd give her my baloney god damn it uh hurricane eyes she was in and then jahi jahay 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 for mortal engines 
Who's who? Which one was Jahe in Mortal Engines? She was the ninja lady. The ninja lady, right, right, right. Who has a bird plane? Yeah, the red and bird is plane. Almost completely wooden. Right. Oh yeah. She yeah. Looks really not good. <laughs> Dresses like she's in the Matrix. Uh, worst bad actress, Dame Helen Mirren. So she gets a double nom. Alicia Vikander for Tomb Raider. Eve Hewson, uh, made Marion in Robin Hood. Nev Campbell, good to see you, Nev. Not really. Skyscraper. <laughs> Lindsay Wagner and Samson. Yep, she was in that. Olivia Mung got a double nom for Predator. Hera Hilmar for Mortal Engines, which I think that's the lead. Yeah, I believe so. The one Scarface. with the scarred yeah, face. You didn't, you didn't like her, huh? No. Okay. Uh, Becky G for AXL, the lead there, the lead female. Uh, and Elizabeth Shue for Death Wish. Now the big three. Best to bad movie. Predator. Rampage. Hurricane Heist, Fifty Shades Free, Mortal Engines, Hunter Killer, and Slenderman. Worst bad movie, Gaudy, Robin Hood, AXL, Samson, Tomb Raider, Winchester, Pacific Rim Uprising, Mortal Engines gets a double nom, huh. Skyscraper, Winchester. Was Winchester on there twice? Yeah, I yeah. said, okay. Uh, Slenderman gets a double nom, and Death Wish does not. No. <laughs> I guess none of us like Death Wish. None of us like Death Wish. <laughs> Uh, and then the Mystery Science Theater 3000 best riffable movie of all time, uh, or, or this, this year, year. <laughs> Mortal Engines, Fifty Shades, Freed, Rampage, Slender Man, Hurricane Heist, Winchester, Samson, AXL, and Hunter Killer. Yeah, Jackie made some questionable decisions on her nominations. <laughs> Did anybody get left out? The Meg. Yeah, the Meg, the Meg. got blanked. Um, I also it was blanked. Just completely unremarkable. I also blanked Death Wish because I couldn't re- really remember anything about it, and that, it was just so. That, that we're talking about movies that didn't get a nomination at all from anybody, not just one person. I didn't. Oh, nominate a lot oh, of shit. okay. Yeah, Jurassic okay. World got blanked. Uh, uh, no, no that, BDH. Yeah, she got nominated for oh, best worst I, actress. I would have been fine if it got blanked. That movie's also. Milk toast as a gift. I thought Tomb Raider was going to get blanked. I was surprised Dude, that Vikander... Alicia Vikander stinks yeah. in that. You guys forget the opening sequence where she's on the bike doing the fucking racing delivery sequence. And the the thing, I, I, I can't put it all on Alicia Vikander, but somebody needs to take some fucking heat for that shit. And, like, Laura Croft is one of the most iconic characters out there right i mean she's you when you say laura croft you know who everybody knows who fucking laura croft is and what she not necessarily you know some archetype of visual what she visually looks like but she's an action person right that's smart and a treasure hunter and exciting and interesting and has depth and Tomb Raider had none of that, and so I personally blame Alicia Vikander because we I have that power. <laughs> not, not the writer that didn't put any of that shit We don't in have an award for worst writer, so Sam. So she's taking she's flack She's taking from, heat because the movie sucked. Because the movie sucked. <laughs> I'm sure she's going to cry all the way to the bank. I would cry, too. And I like her. I like her as an actress. Um, uh, sure. She's fucking great in uh, Man From U.N.C.L.E. God, yeah. she was so good in that. She's good in that Android movie too. Yeah, not bad. I yeah, like, not bad. I didn't like that one out of the Alex Garland movies. I liked Annihilation better, but Annihilation's fucking great, I think. But anyways, uh, any further thoughts on this map, guys? I think we should leave it up to people to vote for best host Ooh. for the year. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll put that together. Um, don't check my math. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's me. I won again. <laughs> You're like, I win every year. Yeah, just, don't worry about it. Don't worry about the how many people voted or what they voted. <laughs> <laughs> I took care of that. Just don't, yeah. yeah it's all cleaned up. Do don't look at it. <laughs> all right, uh, guys, we will have the SMAPFA episode as our next episode. So you do not have a movie to watch this week, except for all these shitty movies that we just set in one afternoon. Do it all at one block. That's the only way to do it. I so, do like doing... Uh, when we do do the SMAF, it's just so, so people know out there. Mm. I personally uh, like when we do cram a bunch of movies in all at once. Yeah, yeah. Um, binge, binge a single day. So you know, if you're if you're thinking about binging something and you want to see like the best of the worst movies, go ahead and and get you know your top three that you think might be pretty good and binge those all at once. That way, you have something to at least when you're listening, you have seen something. Right. Yep. Okay. Uh, get to the chopper. Visit us at www.stinkermadness.com. Follow Stinker Madness on Twitter at Stinker Madness. Please rate and review us on iTunes and Stitcher. Thank you for listening and get to the chopper.